Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. Keeping an eye on my neighbors, they've gotten a bit technological on me. And they've picked up some pigs. I don't know if the pigs are for food or if they are pets. Either way, it's a little bit strange. Let's go back over to the bees. I took way too long in my bee breeding because I had my bees in bee houses and I thought that they could mutate in a bee house and it turns out that they can't. They actually have to be in apiaries in order to mutate. So I was breeding bees and nothing was happening for an extremely long period of time, which was more than a little frustrating. But I finally got my way. I've got these industrious bees and they make the pollen cluster. And I've got imperial bees and they make the royal jelly. And with the two of those, I can start making the scented paneling. So I need a pollen cluster, beeswax, wood, royal jelly and some honey and this makes scented paneling so I just started this process because I need at least 16 of the scented paneling to make my first industrial apiary and that will be very useful as we shall soon see but while that's working I thought I would talk about the Gendistry machines now in the machines you need some consumable items the genetics labware is the primary one Diamond and glass panes for seven, but you go through a lot of them so It's it's a huge usage of diamonds Also need these gene samples. They're pretty simple tin and redstone and then you make then you also need Genetic templates diamond tin and redstone Now the genetic genetic templates you probably don't need a lot of those I made way too many because I didn't realize the gene samples, you do need a few, a, a good number of them, but uh, it depends on what you're doing and what you're going at. So, anyway, again over here is the mutatron and the mutagen producer. So the mutatron is what allows you to mutate two bees into another bee. All the machines require power, so I'm not going to say each time it requires power. You put in the lab, the, the, the labware up there. And you do need a princess and a drone, as you would with any bee mutation. But you'll see that you need about 6,000 mutagen in order to affect any of the various mutations that you can do. The mutagen comes from the mutagen producer, and in this case what you can use is this, this mutagen here. It will uh, turn into about 1,300 millibuckets of mutagen. And each one of these uh, this requires a mutagen catalyst or eight of these and each one of those requires eight royal jelly so basically a stack of Royal jelly is that right eight times eight sixty four. Yeah a stack of, of uh, royal jelly to make uh, One of these mutagens which only gives 1300 liquid mutagen, but I need 6,000 so basically I need about five stacks of royal jelly so quite a bit of it and that's one reason why I want to get an industrial apiary built so that I can sort of ramp up my production of the royal jelly. So that's what those two things do, those two machines do. That's pretty simple. Now the genetic sampler, what this does is if you take a bee, each bee has a certain number of traits and if we go look at a genetic template, here's one that I've already made. Uh, you can see here they call it calls them chromosomes and there is 13 of them the species whether or not it ignores day and night what kind of flowers it use how the speed of it the cave dwelling the effect lifespan territory humidity tolerance fertility flowering tolerant flyer and temperature tolerance those are the 13 and each bee has uh, some of those traits now if you're using the bealizer it will show you those traits so if i put this in here you'll see that there's the species, lifespan, production, pollination, flower type, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. Slot two gives me the climate and humidity tolerances, whether it's day, night, tolerant, or cave dwelling, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, there's other information in there as well, but those are the important ones. I've discovered that I need a bealizer because this analyzer, uh, this scanner, while it does scan the bees, it doesn't give all of that detailed information that you find in the bealizer itself, which 
uh, is kind of important. So anyway, what you do in the genetic sampler is you can put in a, a, a bee, either a drone or a princess, but I recommend only using drones because this does consume the bee. It will be gone. And you will get one of those traits, one of those chromosomes, uh, one of those 13 chromosomes at random. And so in this case, I got the flowers, what kind of flower it uses. And now I have that gene sample. If I put in another, I mean, these are all identical forest drones here. So if I put in another one, I could get the same or I could get something else. It's random which one of those 13 traits you end up with. So this time I got speed slowest. Let me sleep the night away so I don't get attacked. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the, uh, the genes from the bees depending on what you are looking for. So, for example, let's look at these bee again. If I want the forest species trait, I would want to keep doing this until I got one of these. If I wanted any of these traits, that's what I would want. But if I don't want these traits, then obviously, you know analyzing this forest drone isn't going to do me a lot of good because I'm only going to get the traits that forest drone has. So if I wanted a different species, I'd have to analyze a different kind of a bee, obviously, uh, say a meadows bee to get the meadows species. And that's basically what this machine does. It's pretty simple. And you can get the various uh, gene samples from the various bees. So you can see up here I have a bunch of different species. I've got fertility four, which I think is the best fertility. Uh, I've got humidity tolerances and tolerant flyers and, I've, and different genes that I've kept. So if you end up with genes that you don't want, like these two I don't really care for, you can put them into any furnace and they will cook back into a blank gene sample so you can reuse them. And that's how you um, not have to use so many of them. Now, when you have these gene samples, you can combine them with a genetic template in order to put them into the template. So if you look at this template, it's got all 13 of these filled out. That's because I combined a blank genetic template with those 13 gene samples that all correspond to what you see on the screen there. But as an example, if I took, uh, I've got two of these fertility four, so I don't mind using one. And you just do it in any crafting. You can just put that together with that. And you'll see now I will have, you'll see in white there, fertility four. I've only got one of the 13 chromosomes. I don't have the other 12. I'd have to combine this genetic template with those gene samples of those other 12 chromosomes to get the kind of bee that I want this genetic template to represent. And that's how you use the gene samples with the genetic templates. Now, this machine here is the genetic imprinter. And what this does is if you have a genetic template and you put that in there, you're gonna need some labware. You must need labware for almost all the machines. And now basically, if I put a B in here, it will turn that B into matching this genetic template. So I have this forest drone here and I'm going to put that in and it consumes the labware and it's going to uh, turn that bee into matching this. Now, if you have a genetic template that doesn't have all 13 of the chromosomes, then I believe that the bee just uh, keeps the chromosomes that it already had. So if you remember these forest drones had a fertility of, uh, or they were species forest, if I didn't have the species specified in the template, then they would keep the species of forest. And so there you go, I have a noble noble drone. If you start with a, no, uh, with a drone, you end up with a drone. If you start with a princess, you end up with a princess. You, I think you can even start with a queen and you'll end up with a queen. But now I have a drone that came from this genetic template. Now, fair warning, sometimes this process will result in the bee being destroyed and you end up with genetic waste which is absolutely useless. There's nothing you can do with that. So there is a random chance that something bad can happen to your bee. So that's the genetic imprinter. You have the genetic transposer. This is basically a copier. So if you take a blank sample, if I want to make a copy of, let's say, Fertility 4, I can put Fertility 4 here, Labware here, put the blank one there, 
and that will copy and I will end up with a gene sample with fertility four from a blank one. Now you might also be able to do that with one that already has something on it, I'm not sure, but generally speaking you're probably only going to do it with a blank one. And you will see it come out here and boom, then you have another gene sample of fertility four. So once you get a gene sample that you like from whatever bee you are, are getting it from, you can always keep it. You should always just make copies of it so you never lose it. So you can see, for example, I have a mystical species sample. I should never use this one. I should make copies of it and then use the copies. That's what the genetic transposer is for. And you can also make copies of entire genetic templates if you like as well. So that's that machine. And finally, you have this, the genetic, genetic replicator. And this will actually create a queen bee out of whatever this genetic template is. In here now, you can see I have the diligent species with various traits uh, that I've picked out. But in order to run, it needs 5,000 liquid DNA and 5,000 protein. The protein comes from this, the protein liquefier, and it's pretty simple. It just comes from any of the raw meats. Um, beef, fish, chicken, pork, whatever. You put that in there, it liquefies it up. The liquid DNA comes from this machine, the DNA extractor, and this basically gets it from bees. So if you have excess bees, like excess drones that you don't need, you can dump them in there and it will turn them into liquid uh, DNA. And I think one bee gives you 100 millibuckets of DNA. Uh, we should be able to see that here because this should go up to, yes, 3,100. So each bee gives you uh, 100 millibuckets of DNA. So basically you'll need 50, does that sound right? 50 uh, excess uh, bees. Y you can put a, a queen or a princess in here, I think, but that, that would be really, really wasteful. You wouldn't want to do that. And so I just keep up here a bunch of excess bees that I don't want or don't need, and I can uh, get the DNA out of them. And once you have 5,000 DNA or, and 5,000 protein, whatever genetic template you have in here, it will make a queen bee that matches that genetic template. And I use this a lot. I use this all of this machinery other than the mutation one, but I used all of this machinery as I was getting closer and closer since I was uh, sort of going through the mutation process manually in the apiary, you know, as I got, as you can see here, I have, uh, let's go to this one here. You can see I have a bunch of common drones. So I didn't mind putting the common drones into the genetic sampler to get their samples until I ended up with a common sample. So that meant I can make common bees you know, I could make one bee into another common bee in the genetic imprinter. And that allowed me to make the bees so that I could uh, work on um, mutating the bees and uh, breeding them up to what I wanted. And so, yeah, that's how you use the Dent Gendistry equipment. Let's go check on this. It's still working. I've got two more scented panelings to make, and then I will be able to make the my first uh, in, uh, industrial apiary. So I'm gonna click that. I just wanna make sure it's running. It is. Now, let's look at the, I need to make these two of these alviaries and they both require an impregnated casing, which I can make here with some seed oil. So I'm gonna need to do this and I thought I had already made some. But I guess I did not. So let me work on that and I will come back when I'm ready to make my first industrial apiary. Okay, so those casings should be done by now. Let's go check them out. Indeed they are. Two of those and 16 scented paneling. And that should allow us to make two alviaries. One, two. Perfect. Now what we want to make with the alviaries is swarmers and so that is gold on the other side and so two 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 and diamantine electron tubes and that gives me two swarmers perfect all right and so now 
If I look at the industrial apiary, I need uh, all of that kind of stuff. And I think that I've already made it all. Um, hmm, I don't have the aluminium. I'll be back. Okay, let's make sure I did this right. Okay, HV machine hull done. Aluminium gears done. Uh, swarmers go up and down, I believe, like that. Actually, that kind of doesn't look right, does it? No, I think they go to either side. Power modules. B receptacle. Genetics processor. Nope. Wrong. Oh, I had that. They go like this. There we go. My first industrial apiary. Nicely done. Okay. So the industrial apiary is basically a powered version of an apiary. So I'm going to have to find a way to run power out, you know, into this area or something. But just for right now, what I'll do is um, I need it to be able to see the sky. So let me just let me put it there for right now. And let's see, I should have some cables in here somewhere. Maybe in the red one, silver cables, there we go. So if I dig up this grass, like that, and I may not have enough silver cables. Oh, maybe I can do this. So we will put one there. Oh, man, I am such a bad clicker. Clicker, clicker, clicker. Like that. Okay, I'll clean up the mess later. I just want to show how this works. And you can hear the, uh, the reactors have kicked in to supply power to the apiary. So there you go, there's the industrial apiary. And just like a regular apiary, it has uh, slots for putting in a princess and a drone. And then it has the output slots of what those that type of bee produces. So let's go ahead and take this queen, this imperial queen, and we'll put her in there. And again, it functions pretty much identical to the regular forest ap apiary, except that it's powered. But where the real functionality comes in are these upgrade slots. You can see uh, four different upgrade slots are available, and this is where I really like this mod. So let's look at the Gendistry upgrades that you can make. And so here they are. All of them are created from a blank upgrade frame, which in and of itself, in this mod pack at least, is fairly expensive. You need cobalt frame boxes, gold ingots, aluminum ingots, and blocks of redstone for each one of these. Okay, that's pretty pricey, but we can work with that. Now, so let's just talk about, there's all these are all the upgrades as you can see here. There's quite a few of them, but let's talk about some of the really important ones first. Uh, one of the ones I think that is really nice and really important to have is this one, the automation upgrade. Now you'll see here that all these upgrades, first of all, there's a how many you can install into any one apiary. There's a quick thing of what it does. And then you can see the energy consumption. So this apiary will consume some amount of energy just by existing, just by providing a house for this bee to be in. But when you start adding these upgrades, it increases the amount of energy that's used. So there's a downside to, you know, customizing your industrial apiary to work how you want it to work. And that downside is going to be increased consumption of energy. So the automation upgrade, this one's pretty basic and pretty simple. What this does is when this queen dies and it leaves behind a princess and a drone, it will automatically put the princess and drone back into these two slots, let them breed and become a new queen. So it's the equivalent of, you know, setting up some type of uh, automation thing where you pipe the bees out and then back in. See, basically the equivalent of doing that, but in one nice little upgrade. So that's nice. 
Another good one to have is the production upgrade. And you can see there, you can have up to eight of them installed. Each one of them increases production by 20%, but energy consumption by 40%. And this is the key thing that I want to have because by putting my Imperial Bees, these ones that make the royal jelly, that I really need a lot of that royal jelly, by putting in production upgrades, I can increase the amount of royal jelly that they make. So again, something that's very nice to have. Um, another one that could be fairly popular is the lifespan upgrade. That's this one here. You can see you can put it up to four of them. It decreases the lifespan of the bees. So if you have a, a queen that produces, that has a high fertility rate, creates a lot of drones, basically you want to use this in any situation where you want to make a lot of drones. And of course, the reason why you might want to make a lot of drones is if you're using them over here to make liquid DNA. So you want to create a, just an excess of drones, but they're just throwaway drones. They might be of a bee that you don't even care about anymore. You use that lifespan upgrade. That's great for that. Now, a lot of these other upgrades, uh, sieve upgrade pollen collection. I'm assuming that means it produces more pollen, but I don't really know about that one very much. You have a heater and a cooler, and this reduces or increases the temperature of, of the industrial apiary. So if you have, say, desert bees, I think they're called modest bees, or uh, wintry bees, the uh, winter, I have some wintry bees somewhere, but I don't remember what I did with them. Uh, and you need to make the temperature cooler or hotter, you would use those types of upgrades. And same thing for drier and humidifier upgrades. That's going to increase or decrease the humidity level. I believe jungle bees want to have uh, more humidity. Uh, desert bees want to have drier. So you would use that to change the apiary to match what uh, your bees want. The open sky upgrade basically means that you can put the apiary uh, someplace where there doesn't have a view of the sky and the bees will still work. Uh, the territory upgrade is the area around the apiary that the, the bees pollinate. So that's important if you're doing like the tree breeding. Uh, let's see. The genetic stabilizer upgrade uh, reduces the amount of genetic decay that can occur. And what that is all about is that when you genetically create the bees, they have they will gradually over time decay until they die off. And so that's that's a way of of making it so that the the mod doesn't become too overpowered and that you just end up with bees that live forever. You you make these perfect bees that live forever. They are eventually going to die off. But you can use that genetic stabilizer upgrade to let them live a little bit longer. The seal upgrade, which is kind of, for whatever reason, makes me laugh because I think it's about seals, uh, makes it so that the bees will work in the rain. And let's see. We talked about that. We talked about that. Oh, the light upgrade. Uh, I'm assuming that means that they will work at night. And the flowering upgrade Obviously, as you can see, it makes more flowers and more pollination. And then you have these uh, biome upgrades. Plains emulation, winter emulation, desert emulation, hell, uh, uh, jungle. We saw that one in there somewhere. And that basically makes the, the bees in the, in the apiary think they're in the correct biome. So if you had desert bees, you could either reduce the humidity and increase the temperature, or you could just put in a uh, desert uh, upgrade and it they will think that they are in the desert and that is really all there is to it that is the extent of the complication of this mod it's not complicated it's so easy to use but so powerful because it makes the bees so much easier to deal with rather than having to either uh, you know basically having to set up some type of a system of mutating them, upgrading them, and all of that kind of nonsense. You can do things very simply and easily with the Gendistry mod as long as you're willing to provide it with power. And there you have it. The, my first industrial apiary, I will be, uh, as I said, I'll be putting in some production upgrades and an automation upgrade. 
so that this will start cranking out some royal jelly and I will make more industrial apiaries I have multiple uh, imperial queens so they can make a lots of royal jelly for me so they can start working on mutating bees up to what I really want to have but I believe that's going to do it for this episode if you have any questions or comments if you would like to leave me a message saying hi please do so in the comment section down below as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time